Oh my god, the bridge just got 10 times better. Seriously, I didn't think the show could get any better, and seriously, every single episode, it, it just... It amazes me more and more every single episode just how good or how good this show really is. Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and this is my review for The Bridge Season 2, Episode 8, Rakshasa. And holy shit, guys, this episode was amazing. Such an intense episode, like seriously. So much shit went down this episode, especially the ending. The ending had that, you know, huge thing happen, which I'm definitely going to talk about. Definitely was you know, just huge at the end, definitely. I'm really looking forward to the next episode. I think the next episode's going to be amazing, and really, shit is about to go, shit is definitely about to go down on this show. Um, shit went down in this show. You know, I, I suspected it did, and it really did go down. There was a lot of shit that went down, and a lot of people died. This was probably one of the most shocking episodes of The Bridge. Um, a lot of people died in this episode. Um, there were some very shocking scenes in this episode, and I was surprised, really, by how shocking it was. We're, we have five episodes left of this season, and now it's just, it's gonna get so much in more interesting now. So let's just get this episode. Basically, we see Caesar and Eleanor, and they're discussing book. By the way, the episode, of course, ended on that big cliffhanger last week, which, of course, what was gonna happen to Sonya, you know, what was gonna happen to her, where was she being, you know, captured to and everything. We'll get to Sonya in a second, but we first have to talk about Caesar and Eleanor. Basically, they're discussing books, and they f actually form their own little book club. They're talking transitions in the children, and Eleanor reveals that she once had a child that was taken away from her. So, there's a lull in the conversation after that, and then she asks um, Caesar and his, um, is he, does he know how to use a machete so he can teach Janie how to use one? So, the question is, what is really her plan here? That was definitely a very big thing, and the moment she asked him, like, why is she asking this? What does she want from him? I mean, that was definitely very interesting when she said that. I didn't know what she really wanted from him. So then we noticed that, um, I thought this was actually really well done, the way this was done. We find out that this is actually being seen from Sonya's place. They're seeing this outside. Um, basically, we see the chopper, of course, you know, it ended on that awesome cliffhanger last week with Sonya being captured and the chopper. We didn't know where the chopper was taking her to, and basically we see the chopper carry her out of her home and into a van. And Eleanor recognizes the chopper as one of um, Galvan's men and calls him a demon. And we soon see what she means. He chops a, f a f you know... He, um, you know, he cops a feel off Sonya, and Eleanor makes a call to Sebastian to update him on what she just witnessed. So, I like seeing, I mean, Eleanor, as bad as she is, she does, I, I mean, the thing about Eleanor is she's one of those characters that just has a lot of layers to her, really. She's scared at points, she's terrifying. We saw all of those layers in this episode, and I thought that was very done, in my opinion. I think this was actually the first time in a while where we saw all the layers of Eleanor just come out, definitely. I thought that was very well done. So basically, in Mexico, we see Sebastian, um, we see Sarasolo's daughter, R um, Romina, is arrested by police. She is caught high, and she's in possession of drugs. And Marco learns of her arrest when he arrives to the police, and um, I was kind of like... Who is she again? I couldn't remember who she was. And, um, basically Marco, um, goes to the police station to go to talk to her alone, and basically tries to offer her help, and sh but she clearly doesn't want help, so he ends up calling her father, because he really wants to help her. You know, she has this drug problem, and he wants to help her with her drug problem. She does not want the help, though, but she really wants help, so... Sebastian is thanking Marco for helping him and his daughter work out the delicate situation, and he takes Marco aside to persuade him to start working with him against Galvan, um, you know, Galvan. And Marco's very hesitant about this. He does not know if he should do this. However, Sebastian then reveals that Galvan has kidnapped Sonia to kill her. Sebastian gives him a location, and immediately after this happens, Marco just rushes off to find her. The second that he told Marco, where she was, I'm like, oh shit, shit is definitely about to go down here. Because, honestly, think about it. Marco and Sonia really, of course, in the last episode, you know, Sonia did not trust him. You know, Marco still really does care about Sonia. He wants to be a good friend to her. He wants to make sure she stays alive, obviously. So he went to pretty great lengths in this episode to try to get to her. He really did. He went to great lengths and... Also, this could also, you know, be a chance for him to possibly reconnect with Sonya. So, the second that he rushed off, I'm like, shit is about to go down, definitely. 
So meanwhile, Eleanor um, orders Caesar to retrieve Charlotte. Now, Charlotte, of course, was approached by um, that DEA agent. Um, you know, Charlotte was approached by him, of course, you know, to kill Galvan, you know, to help him um, find Galvan, basically. And the question is, is she really working with him? Basically, she wants to retrieve Charlotte so they can transfer Red Ridge View into another person's name. Now, I talked about last week how I felt that Eleanor had her own agenda, and we really saw in this episode that she did. Because Caesar's trying to protect Charlotte, and Eleanor assures him that no harm will come to Charlotte if she does what she's told. Now, that could be a problem because we know, of course, Charlotte's working with the DEA agent, so that's definitely a problem because... She's not going to do as she's told because she was given specific instructions. Basically, she is working with him or she's going back to jail. She was given those specific instructions. So she obviously doesn't want to go back to jail, so she has to listen to him. She just has to take his instructions, and she that she might not listen to Eleanor because of that, and that's just because the DEA agent was the one that told her. You know, she obviously she's not gonna she's gonna listen to the DEA agent over Eleanor. Why would she listen to Eleanor over the DEA agent? That doesn't make sense. I mean, Charlotte's not really a bad person. She's not. She's working with the DEA agent. Now, speaking of the DEA agent, they end up meeting up with Hank, who is actually back at work. We had not seen Hank for most of the episode for a lot of the episode. And basically, he um, he's back at work, and he doesn't seem to even care that uh, Sonya is missing. They instantly move on, and I don't know what that's really trying to show. I don't know if that's. I think it's trying to show that Hank is possibly moving on from Sonya. You know, she's not gonna forgive him. Then just it's like she's not gonna forgive me. Then fuck her. Who cares? Um, he doesn't seem to care about her really at this point. Basically, they discuss how Hank is needed as a cover for him, the DEA agent's investigation of Galvan, and the DEA tells Hank about Charlotte, and how today is the day they will go in to arrest Eleanor Noct, and basically they head to Red Ridge View to finally make their move. That's what's going to happen to them, is that they're going to finally arrest her. And that's huge, because the whole season they've been wanting to catch Eleanor, they haven't gotten a chance to, and the second that they said we're going to catch Eleanor Noct, I was like, oh shit, some, something's going to happen, definitely. So then we see Sonya, and let me just say, the stuff with Sonya in this episode was just torturous. I mean, that shopper guy, again, he really, like, I don't know where he was going to take her. It turns out he has her gagged in the back of a van, and he drives out into the middle of the desert. Now, I don't know if this is what they were trying to show, but the desert was the same place that her sister was murdered. Her sister was murdered and the place where she found out that huge secret about Hank and Jack. I don't know if this is related to that, but I feel like it is. Basically, um, he drives out into the middle of the desert, finally takes her out of the van, and he, ta he then begins digging her own grave. He's basically just going to let her there to die, to die, basically. And she's trying to escape, and, I mean, really just, oh my god, I mean, really. Diane Kruger's performance in this episode was probably the best acting I've seen from her on this show so far. She was fucking amazing in this episode, really, she was. She had a lot to do in this episode, definitely. She did an amazing job with acting, and I just thought she was amazing in this episode, really. Her performance, and the thing is, she didn't have, in the first, like, I'd say 20 minutes of the episode, she didn't have that many lines of dialogue. It was much more of an audit, you know, um, just like a facial expression performance, and you could just see the struggle that she was in. She really wanted to get out of this, and the way it was done was just so well done, in my opinion. So she's trying to escape, and um, basically... She falls a couple of times. The chopper isn't worried, but the chopper doesn't seem to be worried about her getting too far. He didn't even care that she had to go to the bathroom. She's literally like, oh, I have to pee. And he literally took down, like, her, you know, jeans and everything and just made her pee there. Like, I was like, what the fuck? Seriously. He doesn't seem to care about her. And, of course, he doesn't because he was hired by Galvan to do that, obviously. She does not know that. So, Marco makes it to the location that Sebastian gave him, and he meets the man that works with the chopper. And I just thought, I mean, the thing with Marco is that he was so determined to find Sonya. So determined. Like, finding Sonya was his main concern. That's what mattered to him, is that finding Sonya is what he cared about. That's what he needed to do. He needed to find Sonya. That's what needed to happen. And basically, he ends up beating up the man until the man directs him to where the chopper is. He's like, oh, I'll never tell, I'll never tell. He literally beats the shit out of him, and uh, basically, he beats him until he finally tells. 
So he finally arrives, and he ends up shooting the chopper dead. I was like, shit, that was like, I was not expecting that at all. I was not expecting him to do that. And he then unties Sonya, and the, it was a really good scene, definitely. I really love this scene. You could see that, you could just see that it was really just them reconciling, and they're now back together as friends, you know, she now trusts him again. And it really re it's a great way to re earn Sonya's trust. Like the way he did that was just a great way to do that. I knew that's what he was trying to do here. And uh, basically, the chopper's dead. And uh, that's definitely going to. I am wondering where this is going to go, though, because I don't think Marco's just going to get away with this so easily. I don't think he's going to. Marco does not seem like a character to me. He just gets away with things so easily. You know, um, I definitely think this is going to haunt them. And I, this is going to haunt him in the future, definitely. So Galvan, in the meantime, he has found a new hideout, and he's being on the run. He's still getting ton of intel. He knows everything that's going on with Sarasola, Eleanor, and Red Ridge View. Now, he knows that Sarasola betrayed him, obviously. Now, of course, no one betrays Galvan and gets away with it. So he orders his men to raid Red Ridge View and kill everyone in it. Literally everyone. And when I say everyone, I mean everyone. Just kill everyone there. So that was just crazy when he did that. I'm like, all right, I guess that, I mean, Galvan does what he has to do. Galvan's one of those characters where, no, 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 you do not betray me. If you betray me, you're going to die. That's what happens with him. It's like, you betray me, you're going to die. Well, that's what's going to happen to you. And if, if you did that, then that's your fault. You know, that's what's going to happen. So we then see the CIA agent from before, the same man who hired the assassin to kill those linked to the Quintana money, laundering, um, meeting with Sebastian, and they discuss getting Galvan and hope for a smooth transition with no bloodshed. Um, th but the thing is, that's not going to work because they don't even, they have not met Galvan, obviously. It's like, Galvan is not someone who's going to be rational about this. He will fucking, like, if he finds out they're after him, he's going to try to kill them. I mean, think about all the people he killed. He just, he just like, had a fucking raid on the Red Ridge View. Like, seriously, it... Galvan is not rational. Galvan is not a rational person. The second they said that, I'm like, are you crazy? Galvan's not a rational person. They don't know that, but he's just, he's not. So Sebastian's saying that Eleanor is fixing the situation, but they don't have what she wants. Um, so yeah, they don't have what she wants. And the CIA agent leaves a small acorn on the table, and they have what Eleanor wants, which is the acorn. She wants that acorn. So then, we, so then we're back at Sonya's place, and she is questioning Marco about... And I thought the scene was very well done, in my opinion. Basically, she's questioning Marco about how he knew where to find her. And he tells her the truth. Sebastian, you know, Sarah Sola told him. So, she knows it was Galavant who ordered her kidnapping. And she wants to know if Marco is still working for him. And Marco says that he works for the, you know, Chihuahua police. And that's it, you know, um... Sonya says we need to get everyone responsible. And for the first time, we actually see Marco... Um, stop skirting the line and, and actually take a side, yeah, because you know, because like most of the season, he's been kind of back and forth between Sonya and Galvan and, you know, um, Robles, there's been a lot of people that Marco has been talking to, and it seems like finally he is on Sonya's side, he's really going to help her with this, and he's like, alright, we're going to do this, I'm down with this, you know, he is focused on this, and he's actually going to help her with this, so I think that's definitely very good, because I want Marco to help her with this, obviously, I want them to get out of this, I want this to work out for them, and I want them to, you know, get everyone responsible, I want, you know, I want um, them to, um, I don't know exactly what they're going to do, if they're going to, like, press charge or something, I don't know what they're going to do, but whatever they do, I, I don't know what's going to happen there. So then we see a realtor, um, the one who always sees the cardboard cutout of, he is setting up the Red Ridge house. You know, back to you, Eleanor. Um, I wanted to get Marco and Sonya out of the way. Back to Eleanor. This is where shit goes down. Like, this is where it just got crazy. Uh, we see Eleanor, Caesar, Jamie, and shortly after, Charlotte arrives to the house. They are transferring the property out of Charlotte's name, so she's only there to sign some paperwork. She immediately excuses herself to go to the restroom, and she texts the DEA about what's going down, because obviously, the DEA, she's working with them, she is against Eleanor, this, she's not really with them, she's working against them, because of course, El Eleanor's working with Galvan, she thinks, and at the same time, Eleanor orders Caesar and Jamie to attack and kill the realtor, which they do, they then move his body to the garage, when they killed him, I was like... I was not expecting that at all. That was just, that was crazy, definitely. I was not expecting that. Um, sorry, I'm getting a text. 
like that was just that was crazy when that happened. I was not expecting them to do that at all when they like killed him. I was like, shit, that was crazy. Really, I think this was the first episode where I, I once again I think the last time we really saw Eleanor like actually like be like vicious to someone was I'd say like episode three. Since then, it's been Eleanor talking and anticipation and things like that. And finally, here she took some action. I just thought that was crazy. So she then orders. So then, basically, they move his body to the garage, and Charlotte sees what they've done. She wants to leave. She is not happy at all with what they've done because she's not a bad person. She's not like Eleanor. She's not you know a sociopath basically. Eleanor then assures her that she'll be free once they're done with the paperwork. She's like, just stay here. We'll be done with the paperwork. The second she's done that, I'm like, she has something up her sleeves. She, there's some, there's definitely something else going on there. Charlotte doesn't look so sure, though. A businessman then comes in, and then the nor, nor, um, notary, and Charlotte signs the paperwork, and everyone, everything's finalized. The businessman leaves. The DEA thinks it's prime time, to, and of course, but of course, at that same time, you know, it seems like everything's going to be good. But then shit went down because, of course, you know, Hank and the DEA agent said it was time to, um, you know, arrest Eleanor. And that's what they decided to do. They decided to storm the house, arrest Eleanor. Caesar sees the police coming. Eleanor immediately turns on Charlotte, knowing she's the one who told them about their location. You know, she knew the whole time. The women fight, and she knocks down Charlotte. I thought this was going to be, like, Sons of Anarchy. I'm serious. I thought she, she was going to take, like, something and, like, kill Charlotte. I thought that's how the far this was going to go. Um... We then see a DEA and Hank hold them at gunpoint, and the head DEA is looking a little smug because Galvan's men barge, Galva, because also Galvan's men barge in, shooting everyone in sight because, you know, Galvan ordered that attack. They shoot everyone in sight. Eleanor sees them coming, hides in their table. She's the only one that's not shot. Um, so yeah, Eleanor's really a genius. She wasn't shot. And the DEA agents are all killed. Hank was wearing a bulletproof vest, so he was okay. Um, but Charlotte's dead. And that was huge. When they killed off Charlotte, I was like, wow, they are really going far this episode. I did not think they would kill off Charlotte. I swear, I really did not think they would kill off Charlotte. But they killed him off. They killed her off. And um, there's, there, you know, we see many dead. You know, Eleanor's not hurt. Caesar seems to be only wounded. Hank, though, is badly hurt. You know, he's still alive. And it, we're back to the beginning, kind of. Because if you remember, the season began with... Hank walking through that trail of blood and picking up a gun, and that's kind of just how the season began, so we're kind of back to the beginning here, and just, wow, things, shit went down this episode, seriously, this episode proves you do not mess with Eleanor, and Galvan, whatever Galvan's men are gonna do, Eleanor will win in the end, Eleanor will win, she's our main villain here, even though Galvan is another villain, Eleanor is our main villain here, and really, we saw her menacing side in this episode, and I thought that was awesome. Really got to see her be a kick-ass villain, and honestly, this is probably the best we've seen Eleanor, like, all season. Oh my god, this episode is just amazing. I love this episode. By far, best episode of the season. Such a game-changing episode, really. This was such a game-changing episode, and it was probably the most shocking episode I've seen in the show. I was not expecting this many people to die. Let's talk about how high the body count was. All right, so Marco shot, um, you know, Marco shot the chopper, so he died. Um, all of those DEA, you know, Charlotte's dead, the DEA agent's dead, all the DEA agents are dead. Um, Hank's badly hurt, so there's a lot of shit going down here, definitely. Now, I am wondering something. Why did Hank not really care that Sonya was in trouble? Does he not care about Sonya anymore? Is Sonya going to find out that Hank is badly hurt? I'm sure she's going to find out eventually. She has to. So somehow this is going to connect to Sonya and Marco. Because, of course, this all connects. This show is a show where everything connects. So it, it definitely something's going to connect there. As far as uh, Sonya and Marco go, I really hope they get everyone, you know, they, you know, they, they, um, you know, something happens to them. You know, they need to get everyone responsible. Definitely. I thought that was definitely going to be interesting. Um, basically, they're, I guess they're going after Galvan because Sonya knows that Galvan was the one who ordered it. So they're, I guess they're going after Galvan, which is not going to be good for them because Galvan, you don't mess with Galvan, as I said. You really, you can't mess with him. Just don't mess with him ever. Um, so I'm really wondering what's going to happen there as well. Um, as far as Hank goes, I don't know. I'm sure Hank's going to be okay. I think he's going to be in critical condition. I think this is going to be like an art thing, like on Justified, where we think he's going to get killed, but he ends up being okay. I think it's going to be like one of those sort of things. Um, as far as Eleanor goes, I was surprised by how far Eleanor really went. I mean, really. Eleanor, I wasn't surprised per se, but we haven't really seen her be like a very menacing villain till now. And shit, she is such a menacing villain now. 
And honestly, she is such an awesome villain. Seriously, I loved what they did with her character in this episode. Really, because most of the season we've seen her just talking about her backstory for the past few episodes and setting up a plan, and we finally saw it execute, and it's really awesome. And I really feel it's going to come down to an Eleanor versus Galvin, Galvan showdown, because, you know, Galvan, you know, Eleanor is working against him, and he knows that. So, obviously, you know, it's going to be Eleanor versus Galvan. That's going to be awesome to see, definitely. Really looking forward to seeing where that's going to, you know, what's going to happen there. Hanging so, um... I hang in Sonia. Sonia and Marco, do you think they're going to be able to successfully go, uh, you know, um, go after Galvan's men? I do not think they're going to be successful. There's no way they're going to be able to take that many people down. There's no way. Especially after that attack. There's just no way. But seriously, guys, I am in shock at what just happened. I cannot believe they killed off Charlotte. Seriously. Charlotte seemed like a big character, and they just killed her off. There was nothing with Eva and Linda, by the way, which honestly was fine because they did not need to be in this episode. This episode was just so, so intense. Just such an amazing episode. Such a game-changing episode. Love this episode. By far best episode of the season. And that's pretty much all I have to really say about this episode. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I really want to say. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think is going to happen in the next episode. Um... Jeez, that attack was just crazy. Is Hank going to be okay? I'm sure he's going to be okay. Is Sonya going to learn about his condition? Are Sonya and Marco going to be going to, you know, be able to go after Galvan's men? Has Marco officially picked a side? You know, do you think he's officially picked a side there? And are you surprised about Charlotte's death? D agent, fine, but I was not expecting Charlotte to die. I really wasn't. That's it for my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you guys in my next video, which will be my review for, again, Big Brother. I'm not looking forward to it, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So I'll see you guys for that. Um, but seriously, the bridge just continues to impress me more and more and more. And officially, this show has gone, like, higher up on my list now. This show's probably, like, number six, the number six best summer show of the year. Like, seriously, it's so much better now. And just, I can't wait for the next episode. It's gonna be awesome. I'll see you guys in my next video. Okay, bye.